if you want to publish research papers regularly in high impact journals, the skill that you really need to master is being able to find research gaps and not just once, but be able to do it on a regular basis so that every single year you've got three to five really solid research gaps that give you really amazing research topics that you can then uh, put in those really good journals. Because, you know, let's be honest, like no matter how good your writing is, what coherent story you tell in your paper, if you don't have a really impactful research gap that then allows your study to make really novel contributions to your field, like your paper is never going to get published in a top um, Q1 Scopus Index journal. So that's why this skill of being able to find solid research gaps regularly is so, so important um, if you want to become a published researcher. So in this video, I want to give you 10 easy to follow techniques that you can use to find the research gap today. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers write and publish research papers in top Scopus Index journals. So let's start with the first technique of finding the research gap today, really quickly. And this involves reading review papers, preferably systematic reviews, umbrella reviews or meta analyses. And you must find review papers that have been published in the last five years. Preferably, you want to find review papers that were published, published last year or within even three years. Okay, but if you can't find any in your field from, you know, last year, the last three years, you can go up to five years, but I wouldn't go any further because the more recent the review paper, the more recent the research it has been reviewing and therefore the, the higher the chances that the gap, um, the gaps identified in that review paper um, can be addressed by your study. So I've got a review paper open here on ambient air pollution and cardiovascular diseases. And this is actually an umbrella review, which means that it reviews other meta analyses and systematic reviews, which is awesome because it like this just reviews so much knowledge in the field that the gaps identified here and suggestions for future research will be really, really good. So what you want to do is just quickly scroll to the discussion section or the conclusion section um, of the review paper. And there will always be a section on research gaps and future research. It might not be called like this, so maybe there won't be a heading like there is here, but there will definitely always be a section on this um, in a review paper. So you just want to really just read this section and write down all the suggestions for future research this review paper makes and all the research gaps. And if it's a recent one, it's very likely that some of these have not been addressed yet and you can start addressing them. So this gives you a really good first idea uh, for how to find the research gap really, really quickly. The, the second technique that you can use to find research gaps really quickly um, is to look at the research gaps that the researchers themselves identified in a paper. So what you want to do is, again, look at the most recent papers. So there should be papers from either this year or last year. Don't look any further into the past. Uh, just look at this year or last year. And they've got to be papers that are obviously relevant to the topic that you want to focus on. And what you then want to do when you've got a paper like this um, is just go to the introduction, okay? And in the introduction, there's always you know, a, a little section, a paragraph where the researchers um, identify the research gap that they address in this study. Okay. And um, you can see it here, right? Little is known, however, about, you know, it is not clear whether individuals, previous methods, right? It was not generally possible, da, 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 right? So you've got the research gap here. And w if this is a recent paper, okay, it's very likely that you know, th these researchers will be addressing this research gap, but they probably can't address it completely. Okay. So what this gives you as well is yet another idea for where gaps currently are in research. And if you do it with 20 or 30 papers, which by the way is tip number three, you want to look at 20 to 30 recent papers from the last five years, you will really be able to identify the research gap. Okay, so when you're searching for papers in the search criteria, you want to make sure that you're putting, you know, just limited to the last five years. I would even limit it to the last 
three years. If your field is a field where a lot of papers are being published, um, then I would just limit it even to three years and look at 20 to 30 um, papers um, and that will allow you to see patterns in those papers. For example, in terms of what research gaps uh, the researchers themselves are um, identified. Okay, and then tip number four is to start staying organized. So you want to have an Excel sheet or a Word document or whatever other program you're using. The program is irrelevant to stay organized, right? So this is this is a note-taking organizer worksheet that we give to our clients on published researcher um, program. Okay, and it basically looks like this, right? Um, it, it's more for just taking notes on papers rather than finding the research gaps specifically but the point the point and the tip here is that you really want to stay organized when you're looking for the research gap because otherwise you know you you won't remember what what you found what gaps there are and and everything right so you want to have simple columns like research question and name the method is really important for the research gap you probably don't need this because you can put it under the method you do need key findings um, you definitely need the limitations of the paper. And what I would add a column in here, if I was using this for finding the research gap, um, is you know the research gap that the researchers themselves identified. So what I showed you um, in here, right? So this, this sort of thing. And then also suggestions for future research. So what I showed you um, in here on this paper, right? On this uh, review paper. Um, suggestions for future research. Well, this is um, this is what you need to add, I think, in here as a as a column. Okay, so staying organized is the next tip. So tip number five is to look at suggestions for future research that previous papers are making. And again, following on from the previous tips, you want to be looking at around twenty to thirty uh, recent papers from the last. Um, you know, three, maximum five years, but really just look at, you know, last year and last two years, um, that will be even better. And then what you want to do is just um, open, you know, those papers. And again, you don't need to read the paper from start to finish. What, what you want to be looking for is um, future um, research. Let's see what it finds. Okay, because, you know, most, um, most papers will make suggestions for future research. So just by searching for this phrase, you'll be quickly able to find it in the text. And if this is a recent paper, okay, um, it's likely that those suggestions for future research have not been addressed or have not been addressed fully. Therefore, you can address them yourself. Now, again, when, you, when you're finding those suggestions for future research, you want to stay organized, right? And start putting them here. So then at the end, when you've read like 20 papers or so, um, you can see patterns of, you know, what are the most common suggestions for future research that um, are being currently made. So that's uh, tip number five. Um, tip number six is to look at limitations of papers. And again, you don't need to read the whole paper. You're just going to search for the word limitations, okay? Or limit or limited or something like this, right? Um, and then just, you know, write down the, the limitations that, that are listed here. And the vast majority of papers will have that section and it will be somewhere either in the discussion or in the conclusion to the paper. So again, please don't read the whole paper because that's not the point. At the moment, you're just trying to find the research gap. And if you want to find it today, then just search really quickly in those papers to find it. And then once you've found the limitations, you just want to put them, you know, in a column in here, in an Excel sheet. Um, like this so that at the end of this exercise once you've read you know 20 to 30 papers you'll be able to see patterns maybe you know most recent papers that you're reading are very small scale qualitative studies well therefore you know an easy research gap from that is that you know we need more large scale studies to generalize to see if we can generalize their findings okay so um, that's tip number six tip number seven is to use AI tool called consensus. 
And this is really good for finding one specific type of a research gap, which is um, lack of research consensus on a specific um, area. So basically a lot of research has been conducted. However, the findings are somewhat contradictory. Researchers disagree. There's basically a lack of agreement or a lack of consensus. And this is a perfect tool that allows you to, to do this. And when you come in here, by the way, the, the link to sign up for consensus um, with a discount is in the description to this video so if you decide to go for the paid version use the link because you'll get a discount now if you just use it once to find a research gap you don't need the paid version at all you can just use the free version but if you're planning to use it on a regular basis and if you're planning to use the AI features of synthesizing and copilot you'll definitely need the paid version so anyway um, let's um, what, what you need to do here is use a yes or no question. So I'm just going to use one of the questions that, um, that is suggested here by consensus. And it's got to be a yes or no question because what consensus is going to do is going to give you this consensus meter um, in here, okay, from the analyzed papers. So in here, you can clearly see that there is, you know, there's, there's no research gap, you know, for this question, does creatine help build muscle? The answer is yes, okay? So there's no research gap here. But what's going to happen for other questions is that, you know, you will see a split that there will be, you know, maybe 60% of papers will say yes, maybe 20% will say possibly and 20% will say no. So this clearly suggests that there is a lack of consensus on that specific um, issue and that, you know, and then you also get a summary in here, a short summary and a much longer summary in here as well of the research, which then allows you to quickly see where the gap is and why researchers disagree on a specific um, issue. Okay? And then of course you can, um, you can read the papers here, um, save them to your library and so on. I've got another video where I go into much more depth about consensus, um, so you can check it out um, as well. So tip number seven, um, use consensus. Tip number eight is to use another amazing re um, AI tool, which is Avid Note. And this can really speed up the process of finding the research gap. The link to sign up for Avid Note is in the description. It's a, it's a free tool to start with. Just like with consensus, you don't need the paid version if you're just going to find the research gap once or twice. You will need the paid version if you want to use it regularly, chat with PDF documents regularly and stuff like this. But if you follow the link in the description and the coupon code there, you're going to get a discount if you choose to sign up on the paid version. But what you need to do here is upload um, a paper, okay? Um, and then um, you will go to my library. I already have some papers um, uploaded um, in here as an, as an example, okay? And the best thing to, to do with it is to, is to use the first tip that I gave you, is to use systematic um, reviews, okay? So, um, because again, you know, those papers review other papers and, you know, they synthesize knowledge on, on the research gaps as well. So you would just upload the paper that you want to read um, in here. And then in here from the options, you can, you can chat with the document. So you can just ask it any question you want. Uh, but then um, it already gives you like um, suggested generic documents questions. So for example, you can just do this and identify research gaps, okay? And then you just click on this um, and then you click um, enter and then it's going to identify research gaps for you. Um, similarly, you know, you can look at limitations. So one of the tips that I gave you was to focus on limitations of papers. So you don't really need to f read those papers yourself. You can just use Avidnote, for example, to read the papers for you and you click on limitations and Avidnote is going to give you all the limitations from this paper. And because it's a PDF, you can be pretty sure that this is very accurate because you know, AI can actually read the text. So it's not inventing anything. It's actually reading this specific PDF. So the, the summary, for example, of the limitations that it's giving you, it's, it's pretty accurate. Okay, so this is a great tool and you can use all the tips that I've just, that I've given you before on looking at future research, looking at limitations of the studies, looking at the research gaps identified um, using Avidnote. So you're not actually 
you have to spend so much time reading the papers yourself, you can just use AI to do this. And then tip number nine is to use another amazing AI tool, which is called SciSpace. And the link to sign up is in the description below. As with the other tools, it's free to start. And if you're just going to use it once, you don't need a paid version at all. But if you're going to use it regularly to chat with PDF documents, you'll definitely need uh, the paid version, but you can get a discount if you use one of the coupon codes that's in the description to this video. So the, the cool thing about SciSpace is that it can do the same things that I just showed you with um, with Avidnote, but on multiple papers. So what you can do is if you go to my library, okay, and if you upload papers in here, okay, then what you can do is you can actually um, you can actually select all the files in your library and then what you can do is you can chat with them okay so you can ask copilot questions so for example you could you could ask AI yeah you can ask what are the suggestions for future research that these papers make and if you upload, you know, the 30 most recent papers on this specific topic, well, AI can actually read those PDFs and within seconds, it can give you the suggestions for future research. And you can see that here. And it even gives you the references to the papers that it has um, read, which is, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so that's one way in which you could use SciSpace to find research gaps really quickly. You know, other questions that you want to be asking are, for example, you know, what are the limitations of those papers? Okay, because that gives you ideas for your papers. What are the research gaps identified by those papers? What are the methodologies that they've used? What, what is the sample size and things like that, that because a lot of limitations and a lot of research gaps can be found by analyzing the methodology of those papers, but you don't have to do it yourself. You can use AI to do this. Okay. So this is another amazing tool, SciSpace. And as I said, the link to sign up is below. And then tip number 10 to find research gaps today is to join our free community published researcher free. We also have the paid version of the published researcher, but I'm not here to, to sell you anything. I just want to offer you as much value as possible. So I'd encourage you to join this free published researcher um, community that we've got going on. The link is in the description to this video. And then once you've joined it, um, you wanna go to the classroom um, in here, okay? And you wanna go to module one, and then you will see lecture two, find high impact research gaps with AI. Okay, so you will get um, a really in-depth lecture on how to do this, how to find research gaps. You also get worksheets um, that will allow you to, you know, to step by step follow the instructions to find your research gaps today. And um, so the link to join the, um, the published researcher uh, free community is in the description. And apart from if you join it, apart from um, you know, being able to find the research gap. You'll also get to hang out with 563 other PhD students and researchers, all of whom want to become published researchers and publish in top journals. Um, like for example, uh, Nazir, um, who recently submitted one of his papers uh, to a really good journal um, in his field. Okay, so, um, so that's it. That's how you find um, a research gap really, really quickly today and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the free published researcher community.